My first question for you is, what inspired you to, uh, you know, join join an HPC, if you will, as you know, as a coach? At Ohio State, feeling like I needed to make a move. Uh, had been there for six years. I had played there four years, so I, uh, I wasn't really happy with the way I was being paid and uh, that kind of thing. So I was looking for an opportunity to upgrade. At the National Coaches Convention, I had been talked with by the Florida A&M representatives uh, about the possibility of, of uh, being interviewed for the head coaching position. Uh, that intrigued me and uh, went through spring practice at Ohio State. I thought before spring practice that they would have contacted me, but they didn't. So as soon as spring practice was, was finished, I called them and uh, the rest is history. What was that like on, you know, on your first day uh, at Florida A&M? Uh, a little different than Ohio State? It, it, it was, you know, basically what had happened was they, uh, I, of course, when they mentioned it to me that they would be, that they would have some interest, I, I talked to Woody Hayes uh, and told him that I, if they contacted me, I would be interested. He wanted to make sure that if I entertained uh, going, leaving, that I did it before spring practice. Then I asked him casually, you know, what happened to the head coaching position? Thought you guys had some interest in me. I mean, I was I was pretty much certain that they had hired somebody by then. And they said, well, no, we, you know, we're in the process of interviewing everybody down. As a matter of fact, we've interviewed the last guy. And I said, well, have you lost interest in me or what? And they said, we can get you down here tomorrow. And that that's the way it happened, actually. So I had to come in but spring practice had already happened. Okay. And so uh, that, that first year you have almost is like a wash, you know I mean? You, cause you, you can't do a whole lot when you really don't have a chance to put your system in. You come in right before the fall begins. That's what happened with me. I brought in my staff, we went to work uh, and we were just glad to get through that first year with the winning season. So now let me, let me ask you a little bit more about the I guess the student aspect of it. Uh, in your opinion, uh, who has who has the best homecoming and why? Oh, well, I'm telling you now, that's a good one because Florida and M. I'm telling you, they got they have one of the best homecomings around. Of course, you know Ohio State. You know it's so big, uh, and they've been doing it for so many years at, at at those numbers. I mean, you know, you got that many people coming in. It's crazy, but. Florida and m and excuse me, and most HBCUs have a homecoming is special. Absolutely. So I'm I'm curious. Uh, do you have a a list or some of the more memorable players you uh, you played or that played under you or that you coached with or uh, even coaches that uh, that you can remember from your time? I, I keep in touch with a lot of the guys, and uh, of course, before I left Ohio State. I had I had recruited Archie Griffin and and coached him for two years, and uh, Cornelius Green was that same year I recruited Archie. Uh, Cornelius was uh, the, came in as the first black quarterback, and so those those were special times. Coming out down to Florida A and M, we we had the year we won the one AA national championship. Yeah. So the, um, this question kind of goes a little bit more towards, uh, you know, the modern the modern HBCU game. I'm sure you've been watching the news and seeing a lot of these, uh, you know, top tier recruits uh, starting to commit to HBCUs. I just wanted your your thoughts on that uh, as a coach. I think Deion Sanders, Prime uh, Coach Prime, they call him now. Uh, I think he's really uh, hit a home run by coming to Jackson State with the initiative. I mean, that's where it all begins. If you want to try to recruit a player. You know, you have to ask him. You have to let him know that you're interested. I think he had enough uh, good feelings about Coach Prime and who he is that he didn't have any problem talking to anybody about coming and being a part of his organization. I, I just like to give him credit for really getting the whole thing started the way it's going now. And I, I think it's only going to get better, you know, with this NIL thing, uh, if, if it continues to be as big as it is now. I think we'll have more interest. But I think it all started with uh, Coach Prime. Coach Prime, excellent. And then I guess this kind of goes off, you had mentioned the NIL. Uh, what do HBCUs need to, to thrive, to continue to thrive? 
I think the HBCUs are going to have to improve the facilities uh, because, you know, and they're going to have to create the kind of interest in the program that they can attract the big, big television money. And I think they're working on all of that. As a matter of fact, uh, I know SWAC Conference and the MEAC played in the Celebration Bowl game. Uh, and, but because of the, the money contract, I think there was a million dollars that went to each team or they decided that that game would be more important than playing in the national championship because there was nowhere near that kind of money in the national championship. So at least they're putting themselves in a position to be able to participate when, when they, when they deserve to participate. And so they can make the decision, whatever decision they think is right for them at the time, but it's hard to beat that exposure and it's hard to beat that money. If you, if you can get in the position to receive it. So this kind of goes back to your coaching days. And I think I know the answer because I think we've talked about it before. Uh, what is one of your most fondest memories about, uh, you know, your time at Florida A&M? After that undefeated year, which was 1977, in 78, by being in the 1AA, all of a sudden now we could play for it. And fortunately, we were able to win it. You know, we lost one game, but we were able to still get an invite to the playoff. And then we ended up winning it. The very next year, 1979, we had, we ended up being able to play University of Miami. Now that was a great game. And so <laughs> we we ended up playing them at Florida State Stadium. We ended up right, going down towards the wire with, with only seconds left on the clock and we were winning by three points. And University of Miami ended up going for the field goal and missed. And uh, they were going for the tie. And so that, that was a great, great experience for me. And it was, a, you know, it had everything. I mean, it, it, it let us know we could play with anybody, which was our motto. We used to feel that way anyway, but we were able to win that game. And that kind of, that kind of solidified it and also let everybody know we could play with the big boys. I think I just have one, uh, one last question for you, coach. Uh, what, what's a, what's a message you want to share with uh, the next generation of both players and coaches uh, in regards to HBCUs? The message I would leave is that we, we have to think that we can do it. And that that was the part, you know, the point that uh, I think was made in that Sports Illustrated article is that uh, no nobody really thought we could do it except us. And uh, I mean, that, that's where it all begins. And so I think what's happening right now is that Coach Prime has brought to Jackson State a belief system. As a matter of fact, I think he calls it, I believe. Uh, and people are buying in. And I think that that's what we have to do. We have to, we have to think well enough of ourselves that we can we can ask the best players to, to attend our university. And and uh, and I think once we ask a certain number we're going to get a certain number. And, and, and when that begins to happen on a regular basis, then we're, we're, we're going the right direction. And so that's the, that's what, that's the message I leave is that, you know, we, we got to feel good enough about ourselves that we can demand the best. Thank you so much coach for just taking the time to talk with us. We really appreciate it here at the hall of fame.